Alright, so sound hack two. Um, apologies for the sound of the audio, uh, or the bad quality of the audio by the way, it's because I'm using my um, the little mic on my uh, Mac, which isn't great. Anyway, we're still talking about sound hack, and here's the uh, classic block beat that we had up earlier, um, and the playback bar down here. Um, <coughs> if I go back to the hack menu, and look at phase recorder this time, um, the reason I like Phase Recoder is it's got quite a nice time stretch algorithm on it and one that is relatively flexible. Of course, this has now been, I mean, this was, there was a time about three or four years ago when I would have said this was uh, one of the best things out there. Um, uh, but in fact, of course, things have moved on since then um, and a lot of uh, sequencing packages have something uh, of equivalent quality. However, this remains relatively good. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and again, it's it's quite flexible, so um, probably worth a look. Um, so in this case, we've got a few more um, parameters that we can change in this window. Um, if you remember our talk on FFT, you will remember this idea of bands or windows, uh, window size, um, which will determine <coughs> whether things work better in the audio or the uh, dog. sorry dog will come to see me um, whether things work better in the uh, in the time domain or the frequency domain so if you've got a higher number of bands you will get a better um, frequency um, uh, quality in terms of frequency uh, so better for smoother sounds and changing sounds Whereas with a shorter window length, you'll get um, it's usually better for time um, time based or you know sort of rhythmic elements in a um, in a sound. I would say that Soundhack is not your best bet for this because it doesn't analyse the sound for hits, um, which uh, say Logic or a variety of other um, time stretch algorithms will. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd t generally recommend it for longer, smoother sounds. Anyway, um, <clears throat> once again, I mean, I can use it with the classic rock beat, and that's what I've got up here at the moment. Um, so if I were to do that, then I'd probably want it to on a sort of longer, uh, sorry, on a shorter window length. And the overlap refers to the number of overlaps of these windows. So you've got short windows, but uh, they overlap four times within a single window, I believe. Um, hamming is the shape of your windowing, um, and that's basically a sort of uh, a smooth um, attack and decay um, window. Um, you have others as well, but hamming works pretty well. And scaling, uh, you use so one time scaling would be obviously the same length as you start with. If you put it at um, three scale three point zero, then it would give you. Uh, a stretch that's three times longer than your original sound. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I'm talking obviously about time stretching at the moment. Here we're talking about the time scale. Um, we also have a pitch scale, which means that we can change the pitch without changing the length of the file. Uh, but at the moment we'll leave it on time scale. Um, you've got analysis rate and synthesis rate. This seems to be a display that's related to the uh, choices that you make in terms of bands and overlap. I don't think that's something you need to change. Um, and we'll leave scaling function for the moment, we'll come back to that. Resynthesis gating is a kind of noise reduction tool. Um, once again, I'm going to turn that off because you can do noise reduction elsewhere. Um, and we will process that. Um, once again, I shall put it in this uh, space here, so it doesn't where I put it. And we have. A fairly uh, characteristic, uh, time stretchy, kind of metallic quality. Um, so that, um, so you take it or leave it, whether that's the kind of thing you want or not. Um, what I will do, uh, I'm going to open a different sound. Oh, incidentally, you don't have to open a sound from the file menu, you can do that file and then open, but you can also do it from. Um, you can just drag and drop onto your sound hack icon and it will, your sound will open up from there. So we'll go back to music and we'll go to processing fodder and choose a slightly longer sound, which 
would be perhaps my uh, let's choose a cowbell sound. Drag that into sound hack, drop it, and it sounds like this. That's thrilling. Um, and we go to hack and phase recorder again. This time I'm going to put the bands on a 4096. Um, again, mess about with the overlap. I'm going to put it on two times just from experience. It tends to work better, I think. Um, Hamming I'm going to leave. Now scaling again, I could put on a very, very long stretch on this. Um, uh, I could say well, I'll put on 10, for example, or whatever. <coughs> thing is, obviously, it's going to maintain that stretch, or that length of stretch, throughout the entire file. But it may be that you want it to change throughout the length of the file. So you might want the attack to remain uh, the same, um, you know, the, uh, short, um, and then the decay to be longer. So, for example, if you've got a, uh, a sound which um, you've got a, a prematurely curtailed re uh, resonance or reverb or something like that, a, a tail that, that chops off, um, too soon, you might want to stretch that out to make it sound more natural, for example, in, a, um, in um, certain circumstances. Um, so if you want to do that, you go to the scaling function again, edit function, um, <coughs> and this time your function window uh, has different um, top and bottom um, sort of limits, but other than that, uh, function is very much the same as it did before. Uh, here we've got a stretch that could be 128 times the length of the original file. I don't think we want it to be quite that long. Um, so I will make my upper limit, uh, uh, where should I put it? Uh, I'll make it 20 times that length. Um, it defaults to, I think, about zero here. So once again, if I want the attack of that to remain the length that it is, but then the re remainder of the sound to increase, then I might do a kind of uh, increase like. Um, and here's where smooth comes in quite e quite useful because you can see that it's a bit of a um, a bumpy line, so you can smooth it out by pressing the smooth button. Um, okay, that again, and then process. So, um, so we'll try that. Save. And you notice that the first bit got processed extremely quickly, and then the rest of it was took a bit longer. Incidentally, when it is processing, I, it's too late now for me to demonstrate it, but when it is processing, what you can do is you can pause it uh, as it's processing so that you can audition what you've processed so far. And to do that, when it is, when obviously when your, your progress bar is kind of moving along here, press command and comma, so the Apple key and then comma. That pauses it, you can then press play, and it will play the processed file up to the point where you stopped it or you paused it. Um, and then once you've once you've done that, you can press command and comma again in order to get it to continue processing. If you want it to stop the processing altogether, press command and period, so command full stop, and that will stop the processing. Anyway, so what do we get? Well, we've got an extended decay, which is exactly what we expected, but it's a pretty good quality one. <laughs>